So welcome back to the last case for Super Paper Friday. In this case, we are going to Russia, specifically the Soviet Union, as they called it back then, but we know it now as obviously Russia. And so this case is not as well known, and it does happen during like war two times. So, and so in this case, of course, obviously not being as well known, I thought it should be covered because you know, considering the reason why she joined the war and how she's remembered, obviously I felt that she should still be remembered and discussed today. So here we are. Uh, if you're interested, you know, a woman who fought in the Soviet Union, of course. If you know any more that I should know about, definitely let me know. Sources down below as always. You know, I got like, I think I got like five in this case. And so with that being said, let's get started. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my head. So we're going to start with Maria. So Maria was apparently born on August 16th, 1905 to a peasant family. And apparently out of like 10, she was one out of like 10 kids. I don't know if that means she was like the oldest or out of like the 10 kids there was, she was just like just the one. And so obviously being a peasant family, they couldn't afford to like go to school and shit and obviously, uh, most other basic things. And so at one point during Maria's life, there was a Russian revolution. And so thanks to the Russian revolution, communism became a thing, which may be bad for the people that work hard. But uh, for peasant families like the one that Maria was in, she was able to go to school and the family was able to get like a good education and it no longer were indentured servants, which basically were treated worse than slaves. And so before World War II started, she was like working as a phone operator. And so in 1925, she would be a Soviet officer. And so apparently after they get married, they go legally change their last name to October. So not in October like in English, but October in Russia to honor the October Revolution. So of course, with her being like a military wife now that she'd have married this uh, Soviet officer, she became a military wife and he was on military wife council, which apparently was a thing. She would learn how to drive tanks. She was learning how to do all this shit. So as we know, 1939, World War II broke out. Uh, apparently exactly... Today's September 1st. Apparently today is the day World War II actually broke out, actually. So World War II broke out today, like, how many years is that? That's 60, 60 uh, 61 to get to 100, plus 23, 80. So 84, it's 84 years today. World War II started, apparently. So Germany and the Soviet Union apparently had a non, apparently agreed to, like, a non-aggression pact. So, like, we're going to fight together. So we ain't going to, like, beat each other up. We're going to fight together. But Hitler wouldn't try to do that shit. He was trying to, like, take over Russia. But we're going to let Russia think we friends. So that way they now expected us to whoop their ass. And so, of course, this being Russia, you know, obviously, it's, like, winter over there. And if you've ever been to Russia, you know that that snow is not friendly. Like, it's brutal for what I've read. And so, this apparently became Hitler's undoing when in 1941, he proceeds to try to wipe out the Soviet Union and try to replace it with Russians. So, of course, Maria and her family escaped to Syria, where apparently it was safe at the time. And, because most of her hometown is destroyed by Nazis. So, of course, obviously, you guys escape, so you don't get killed, too. So, she finds out in 1943 that on August 9th, 1941, her husband apparently died. So this is causing her to snap. She writes to Joseph Stalin, who's a leader of the Soviet Union at the time. But before she does this, apparently she goes to like the enlistment office to go see if she can enroll. And you know, like you can't enroll legally till you're like 18. I'm pretty sure even back then you could enroll till you're like 18. Uh, and I thought she would laugh that because she was a woman. No, it was because she was 36. So she was past the age most places would accept you. And she had past diseases such as tur tuberculosis. And so I thought Maria would, um, I thought originally when I heard the story, I thought Maria bought the tank. Apparently she sold everything she had that she could sell, like monetary value, sold it to go get some materials to build a tank that she named Fighting Girlfriend. And so even though she was like married to her husband, she wasn't the girlfriend. Obviously Fighting Girlfriend sounds better than Fighting Wife. So like, you know, hence I'm pretty sure that's why she chose Girlfriend. So then, this is what she writes to Stall and say, hey, like, look, I want to go fight you. Like, my husband died serving your country. I want to go fight for the country. How I even got a tank. However, if I, if you take the tank for the Soviet side, I want to be the one to drive it since I'm the one that paid for it and built it myself. Which, you know, understandably, Stalin agrees. She's put into this five-month program. She has an advantage because before the husband died, remember I said she was, tr she was learning how to drive these tanks and she knew what she was doing. So she was ahead of all her male uh, counterparts and they're obviously very impressed. And some of them even thought it was propaganda having a woman in the, 
of the army, but she pretty much very quickly proves like, hey, I could do the same if not better than you. So her first battle, she would start, um, she would start battling out in Samoic. And apparently in that battle alone, she took out 30 Nazis and a tank. Apparently she even ignored orders and she got out of her tank while there was active gunfire and was started fisting on her tank after her tank started getting messed up. And so apparently this wasn't just one time. She was doing this multiple times during, while there's active gunfire heading her way. So, you know, so she can like fight for the country, defend her husband's honor. And so eventually she gets promoted to sergeant. She would have forced eventually after proving her her how much she could do. She was eventually well respected and then because become a poster girl. So in the Battle of Kirk, apparently Kurs K U R S K, that's what she would cause the most damage to Nazis. Did specify how much damage she caused, but apparently out of all the fights she'd been in, that was the most damage she did. So that was like her prime pretty much. So in November nineteen forty three, the Soviets basically took over Davido Cello at night. So basically let these Germans know that like, we ain't playing around with like, y'all done fucked up, we all tried to attack us. So on January 17th, 1944, they, the Soviet Union decided to go at night and they decided we're going to go at night and we're going to fight at the Leningrad line. So of course she winds up like destroying some like, uh, she winds up destroying like some machine gun nest. Uh, her tank does wind up getting destroyed by a Nazi tank. She gets out, tries to fix it like she normally does. She of course gets shot in the crossfire, gets shot in the head. She is in a coma for two months. She's in a hospital near Kiev, so like Kiev, Russia. Or this, wait, that's Kiev, Ukraine, my bad. So Kiev, Ukraine, and she dies on March 15, 1944, as a result of being shot in the head, obviously. And so she would be buried next to the soldiers that died in the War of 1812. And on, sometime in August of 1944, she was posthumously, remember posthumously meaning after death, she was rewarded a hero of the Soviet Union. So yeah, that is a, uh, the case of a woman who fought in the Soviet Union during War II. Of course, like I said, not as well known. Um, there are people that try to push out this this story, of course, myself included, because I, I feel it should be told, considering how, you know, she did this all because her husband was killed in the war, and anger, and she wanted to serve her country. So, you know, there you go. Uh, if anyone has any questions for me, let me know. Like I said, source down below. If you got any similar cases, of course, let me know, and I'll see if it next week. Bye! So with the play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing, and my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing, sitting there gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel